Hey everybody, welcome to Cosmic Origins. My name is Jace. So we had some news come out today regarding the automated market maker AMM liquidity pool update for the XRP ledger. And as we already know, the way that this functions is that you need 80% vote approval from the XRP validators for two consecutive weeks in order for the new amendments to go through. And this is how the social governance works. And so we had passed that 80% threshold, which we've been talking about here on this channel for a couple of weeks now. Um, we've been talking about this coming up and we passed that threshold on the first. And now what was set to happen on the 14th of February has now gone back. And one of those validators might be more than one now has taking their yay vote to a nay vote. And so that 80% threshold is now under 80%. And so that two week period has been reset. And now that update that was set to go live on February 14th is no longer going to go live. So on the surface, this is a bit of a bummer for the XRP community because we have been looking so forward to this update because these liquidity pools are gonna be so, so major to the XRP ledger, to the blockchain, and really to cryptocurrency and financial sovereignty in international markets as a whole. So it was a bit disappointing for a lot of people in the community. And there was a lot of uh, uh, kind of just, you know, people that were not in the best mood because of it. And so I wanted to share what David Schwartz has said regarding the uh, the delay of the XRP AMM, because I think it shed some insight into why this isn't necessarily a bad thing. And before I click play on this, I want to remind um, maybe people that don't know, if you're new to XRP, if you're new to this blockchain world, there was a previous update, um, XLS20, for the XRP ledger, which was for NFTs. And that update of the same thing happened where it was it was uh, had reached that 80% threshold and it was set to go live. And then shortly before the update was set to go live, some of the validators removed their yay vote to a nay vote, which caused uh, the, a delay in the update. And the whole reason for the XLS20 version, the NFT version, was because they had found a bug in the code and there was a security threat basically in it going live. And so that's the whole point of these social governance votes is for the validators to be able to test the new code and make sure that it's going to operate well and securely. And so it's actually a good thing if not everybody is totally committed in that version of the update, if the code is the way it should be, because it, it allows them to go and actually fix things that might have been a security breach in the future, which uh, was good for the XLS20 update, and we still got it a couple of weeks later for the NFTs. And so I'm thinking this is going to be a similar thing. We don't know how long it can be delayed. But let me go ahead and play David Schwartz's comments talking about this. This was from a space just earlier today uh, with a bunch of people in it, and he came in and, and spoke for a little bit. And uh, shout out to Good Morning Crypto page for posting this clip with the captions and everything. So let me go ahead and play it for you guys. I think I can speak for everybody at Ripple when I say we would like the XRP ledger to evolve as quickly as possible and to add as many features as, as quickly as possible. But we would also like everything to be as safe as possible. We never we don't want to take any risks. Right. You know, I'm proud of the community. I know that I know that like from the outside, sometimes, you know, as a saying that like people who like sausages and respect the law shouldn't watch evil one being made. And we do this in public, like it's on Twitter, so everybody gets to watch the sausage being made, and sometimes it's not super pretty, and sometimes I have to, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish that didn't happen, but I mean, overall, the process is pretty good. Like, everybody got to express their views, and um, things didn't always go the way that I thought was right, and that's good. I mean, imagine if the community always did whatever I said I wanted, or imagine if I, like, if, like we had a secret cabal that just, like, decided on everything privately and then announced our results to the public. Like, that would be way worse. And would I like it to be less acrimonious and more like absolute polite and respectful? Maybe, but then there would be no passion. So, you know, um, I just want to say, even though it has been contentious at times, and even though I know people have, like tempers have gotten a little heated in times, and I think, I think, I, but everybody got to see everything. And so I, I, I'm, I just want to say that I'm, I'm just proud of the way it happened. And I honestly, like, can't really think of a better way overall. 
all. And I just hope that I just hope that there isn't real acrimony. I hope that there aren't people who are like, oh, those guys, man, why do they keep like we're doing what you're doing? We're advocating for what we believe and what we're passionate about. And there is a tension. Like I think I can speak for everybody at Ripple when I say we would like the XRP ledger to evolve as quickly as possible and to add as many features as, as quickly as possible, but we would also like everything to be as safe as possible. We never, we don't want anything to break and we don't want to do anything that doesn't work well. And there's a tension between those and reasonable people are going to disagree on how to, how to get that balance. We don't have any secret agenda about any particular amendment. We don't have some secret strategy in mind for these amendments other than that we think they'll add value and we think they're good and we think people will find them beneficial and we like better things. We like good things like everybody does. And um, I guess that's all I wanted to say. But I do want to say again, I am proud of the community and that I think that like the way this worked out. Man, I just love how authentic David Schwartz comes across in when he speaks, like when he speaks in these public spaces, you don't get the impression, at least I don't, that he's trying to manipulate or be secretive with what he says. He is always very open and expressive with his thoughts and the way that they're approaching this. And in particular, I thought it was uh, really interesting that he specifically said, uh, you know, this, there's not like, what if there was some secret cabal, you know, it's, it's not, if it was like that, it would be very different. So he he was drawing a distinction between the decentralized way that it operates and what the centralized financial system has basically been like for quite some time uh, as a centralized cabal. And he's saying, hey, look, it's it's not a centralized thing. Like this is this is by the community, by the validators. And so there needs to be that group consensus for it to go through. And uh, it's better that we get an update to the code then have faulty code go through for whatever reason and then have some kind of exploit or issue like we've seen with like solana and other blockchains so xrp's got a really good record of never having gone down and it's 10 plus years of being a blockchain and i don't think they want to even come close to jeopardizing that so it's always better to have a little bit of patience and security and have it pay off and uh you know i think divine timing this is going to come out when it's meant to and and when it is in in alignment with uh, the greater plan with the divine plan so let's go ahead and jump to another clip here so this next clip is from a space earlier today from mario narwhal who is, i don't know if i'm saying that right let's see um Mario Nar, yeah, I think it's Narwhal. Doesn't say it here, but anyways, this is from a clip earlier today. And he, if you don't know who this is, Mario, he is like the they call him the king of the Twitter spaces because he has become the main go-to uh, place for discussing uh, current events and breaking news stories on X. So he is like the main space holder. Elon, tons and tons of people, very you know, large voices come into his spaces and, and give their opinions. So this is a clip of them actually talking about XRP. Not Mario himself, but one of the speakers, Mikkel, uh, came up and talked about XRP and was quickly shut down by one of the other speakers, very quickly censored. So let's play this clip real quick. Cool. Did you have a response to Ryan? Sorry, Zach. Sorry, Doctor. Yeah, I mean, I do think it's kind of funny. I mean, all this talk about, hey, what is, what are these projects going to be used for other than speculation? And then you have the XRP ledger, right? One of the few blockchains that has a specific use case to move money all around the world and is being adopted in real time. And then everyone likes to dismiss it and say, oh, well, not, not that project. You have all these different projects that have absolutely no you mean the ledger that do, or You mean the ledger that doesn't require the tokens for any of its use cases? That's, that's, fundamentally that's, fundament, not right, Rand, that's fundamentally not true. XRP is burned I've in every, looked, XRP is burned in every single transaction. Oh, no, so you're just gonna, I've looked at the tech. I've looked at the well, you're, you've looked, you've looked poorly it. at it because your first with statement was wrong. CTO, you've looked very poorly at it. What is the CTO of Rip? And you have a response to Rand. It's also worthy to note that uh, one of the executives or one of the head guys at Uphold, this guy right here, uh, Dr. Uh, I think it's Dr. Martin something or other. Uh, but anyway, he is he's like the chief research officer for Uphold. And he was speaking 
uh, throughout the space. So he is a very big, obviously, XRP supporter. Uphold is a big XRP supporting exchange. So this overall was, I think, just a really good sign of that, that this is getting into the collective consciousness now, right? To bring up XRP in a space, especially a space that tends to be Bitcoin and Ethereum dominant. And then, of course, you have this guy, Ran over here, who I'm not familiar with, but he has almost a million followers on X. And uh, a lot of people uh, in the comments of this post were talking about how the other guy was just, you know, basically has been behind a lot of rug pull projects and has backed a lot of nonsense in the crypto space. And, uh, you know, how we should have let the, the Mickle speak more. So I overall, I just think it's a really bullish sentiment for them to be bringing up XRP in the space. That got me pretty excited because things can get seeded into the collective consciousness very quickly. So now I have a link to share um, about Gary Gensler. So Gary Gensler, the head of the SEC, was getting grilled in Congress today. And uh, this is Senator J.D. Vance. And I'm not going to play the whole clip, but I'll play you some parts because he was calling out Gensler's connections to the Clinton Foundation, among other things, and pointing out basically how he has this team of people that have conspired to take down Trump and his team, and how there's a very you know, uh, obvious agenda that they're fulfilling with Gary as the head of the SEC. And of course, the connection to this, if you're not familiar, is the biggest lawsuit basically of Gary Gensler's uh, time as being head of the SEC was the Ripple lawsuit regarding XRP. That was like the most um, like scandalous lawsuit that that I think was their their biggest um, really focus. And so it just goes to show you that you know where where the plans are aligned. So if you're someone who has been like, oh XRP, I hear it's the banker's coin. You know, I think it's aligned with the NWO and things like that. Very clearly, the people who are aligned with the NWO, people like Gensler who worked for Hillary, who have worked with Obama and others, you know, they are profusely anti-XRP. They're extremely anti-XRP. So that just tells you right off the bat, like, you know, where where things are aligned in terms of uh, what is what is attempting to serve the greater good and who are the people and the groups that are attempting to stop that from serving the greater good. So let's just play the beginning of this. In 2016, you were the CFO of Hillary Clinton's failed presidential campaign. Is that correct? I was proud to be chief financial officer to the Clinton campaign. Great. Chairman Gensler, is it also correct that your current enforcement director, Gerber Grewal, was most recently the attorney general of New Jersey? A yes or no answer will suffice. Uh, he served his, his nation well, and he was attorney general of New Jersey. So just to recap, um, the attorney general of New Jersey is the guy who refused to enforce immigration laws and cooperate with ICE. He also launched, I believe, eight separate investigations against Donald Trump during his time as attorney general. Chairman Ginsler, is it also correct that your recently hired general counsel, Megan Barbero, was previously deputy general counsel under Nancy Pelosi and litigated two impeachment hearings against Donald Trump? Uh, I believe she was deputy right, general counsel. Of here. You kind of get the point. Great. So I want to recap just a few things, um, and then I want to ask a question. Oh. First, you were Clinton's finance director in 2016, Hillary Clinton's finance director. Second, you hired anti-Trump enforcement director Grewal in July of 2021. But uh, they open SPAC merger using a novel legal theory against your boss. Joe Biden's chief political rival, uh, also against a social media company, which, of course, at the time, Twitter and Facebook and every social media company had banned the former president. So you can make a pretty good argument that the SEC was using its enforcement powers to silence the chief political rival of the former uh, of the current president. Now, let, let me just. All right. So it's obviously very clear that Gensler is anti-Trump and has done everything he can. You know, whoever's pulling his his strings or using him as a puppet um to keep trump out and to do everything they can to stop him so the fact that they're equally as opposed to xrp and ripple just shows you where things are aligned and it makes me think of when trump talked about cryptocurrencies and how he talked about how he's opposed to unregulated cryptocurrencies and now guess what the only cryptocurrency that's regulated after this sec ripple lawsuit after the sec lost is xrp so everything is aligning xrp being the 
pro-American crypto, Ripple being an American company, but XRP being an international decentralized currency, the powers that uh, are trying to remain afloat are, you know, adamant about trying to take it down as much as Trump. So it just goes to show you, you know, how much of a threat it is to their well-being and to, um, you know, the systems that they want to try to create and and the the orders that they want to instill in the world. So now I'm going to show you a clip from an interview with Obama. And this is just a short clip. I'm going to play it. It's a, uh, well, you'll see, and then we'll talk about it. <laughs> the question we now have to ask is if technologically it is possible to make an impenetrable device or system where the encryption is so strong that there's no key, there's no door at all, what mechanisms do we have available to even do simple things like tax enforcement? Because if in fact you can't crack that at all, government can't get in, then everybody's walking around with a Swiss bank account in their pocket. How are they going to enforce stealing your money when they can't get into your crypto wallets? Well, that's the whole point of crypto <laughs> is that big brother can't stick their hand in your wallet. So I think it's just hilarious. You know, he's referring to Bitcoin, I guess, specifically here, but this applies to crypto in general. If you have a private wallet, you're given a private key and this private key is your password and only the individual or whoever has that private key only they can access the funds and nobody that doesn't have the private key can't get access to the funds so you know he he likens it to having a, a swiss bank account in your pocket everywhere you go and this is their worst nightmare because they cannot track they can't forcibly uh steal they can't um you know do whatever they wouldn't they can't shut down your accounts you know they they would love to have a system um, which is even more strict than the current digital system we have. And they're tightening down on it. So this is one of the reasons why I think literally having your money in a bank account is one of the riskiest places that you could have money right now. And, you know, I still have a bank account. I obviously use it for uh, basic things. So, you know, I keep minimal operating expenses in my bank. But other than that, I do not keep savings and things in the bank because it's just not safe. And uh, I, you know, there's the CBDC thing that's coming in too, where they could be just shutting off access to the old currency as they try to bring in their new currency. And you could be stuck with the old US dollar or whatever your national currency is. So they're trying to get people afraid of crypto. Um, and they're trying to get their, you know, guys who, who are struggling to keep their power to do everything they can to create you know, legislation and regulations that are going to prohibit or at the at the very least track everything that you're doing, you know, re require you to register your wallets and things like this. Whereas right now, wallets are not associated with identity. So this is really the golden era of crypto um, because they have not forcibly enacted any of these things yet. And hopefully they won't. Right. But this is this is the reason why crypto is the foundation of the sovereignty that we are really blossoming into right now because the financial sovereignty is the basis of really all of our other freedoms in life. And if they take our financial sovereignty, they can just shut down your money and take it away from you when when they don't like what you're saying or what you're doing, you have no other freedoms. You know, you're not gonna be able to buy gas or buy food or whatever. So having a decentralized currency that no one group controls that is run by the people for the people, that is the way of the future. And that is what we're teaching in Conscious Crypto Academy. So I'm actually going to be launching, as some of you know, a new container in March for the Conscious Crypto Academy, which is the school that I run. And we're going to be teaching everybody, uh, new, new uh, investors to crypto. If you have a little bit of experience, this is going to be perfect for you. So this is going to be teaching everyone the fundamentals of crypto, how to actually purchase, sell, and transfer setting up a private wallet, taking payments with your crypto, and then eventually setting up decentralized passive income streams, which is one of the most amazing things about crypto. 
is that you can actually create decentralized interest and other forms of yield on the blockchain without relying on a third party centralized group. So if you're interested in joining that academy, you can click the link down below and you can learn how to join us. Thank you guys for watching. If you found value in this, please hit like and subscribe. It'll help the channel out a lot. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.